Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're taking a deep dive into something um, pretty mind-blowing. We're going to be talking about the idea that time itself could actually be a form of energy. Oh yeah, it's definitely a fascinating concept. And you know what's even more wild is how it might connect to those mysterious forces shaping the universe. Mm -hmm. Dark matter and dark energy. Exactly. We're going to try to unravel how this idea of time as energy could potentially explain those dark forces. And the really captivating thing about this whole idea is that it's not just some philosophical musing, you know. We can trace it back to some pretty fundamental principles in physics. Oh, okay. I like where this is going. So where do we even begin with this? What are some of these physics principles we should be thinking about? We'll take the uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics, for instance. All right. So for those of us who aren't quantum physicists, could you uh, break down the uncertainty principle for us? What's that all about? Sure. Basically, it says that you can't know both the exact energy of a particle and the precise moment it occupies that energy state at the same time. Right. Like the more accurately you try to pin down one, the fuzzier the other one gets. It's a bit of a trade off. So it's almost like trying to measure like uh, a flickering candle flame. The moment you zero in on its brightness, its shape gets blurry and the other way around. That be a decent analogy? Yeah, that's a great analogy. And you know, this inherent uncertainty that's built into quantum mechanics, it suggests a deep connection between those energy fluctuations and how time flows at the quantum level. I see. So there's this inherent link between energy and time, even at the smallest scales. Right. And then the really fascinating part is when we try to like zoom out and think about this principle on a cosmic scale, like for the entire universe, could time on that grand scale also be a form of energy maybe constantly changing and interacting. Whoa. Okay. So instead of thinking of time as this rigid, unchanging backdrop to the universe, we're imagining it as something dynamic, something that can actually interact with energy and matter in ways we're only beginning to understand. Exactly. And, you know, theoretical physicists are actually exploring models where time and energy are treated as what we call conjugate variables, which essentially means they're two sides of the same coin, inseparably linked. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's not just a philosophical idea. There's actual physics backing this up. Yeah, there's this paper titled Energy as a Measure for the Elapse of Time, and it explores this whole concept suggesting that different energy levels could even lead to different experiences of time. Hold on. So instead of one universal clock ticking at the same rate for everyone and everything, time could speed up or slow down, depending on the energy involved. Precisely. And this is where things get really interesting when we start thinking about dark matter and dark energy. Okay, I'm all ears. Let's bring those dark forces into the picture. So imagine a time energy spectrum. Hmm. On this spectrum, different energy levels correspond to different experiences of time. Okay, I'm picturing like a spectrum of colors, but instead of colors, it's like different intensities of time energy. Now let's bring in black holes, these massive objects with their immense gravity. Oh yeah, black holes, gotta love them. Always a good time. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, gravity warps space-time, right? And with a black hole, the gravity is so strong that time actually slows down significantly near it. Right, right. So if our time energy spectrum is like a gradient of how fast time flows, Black holes would be at the extreme end where time is almost frozen. You got it. Now think about dark matter. It's this invisible stuff that exerts a gravitational pull but doesn't emit any light. Right. The mysterious dark matter always lurking in the shadows. What if dark matter is actually regions where time energy is super concentrated, like incredibly dense, creating the strong gravitational pull that's holding galaxies together? So instead of some exotic invisible particle, we're talking about a warping of time itself. Yeah driven by this concentrated time energy. Yeah, that's the idea. It could be a much more elegant explanation for why galaxies spin the way they do. Because they rotate faster than they should based on their visible matter alone. Right. Exactly. So maybe we don't need to invent these hypothetical dark matter particles. Maybe it's just the warped space time itself caused by concentrated time energy that's doing the heavy lifting, so to speak, yeah. holding those galaxies together. That's a pretty wild concept. So this time energy halo around galaxies could be the key to understanding dark matter. But what about those gravitational lensing effects we observe around massive objects? How does that fit into this picture? Well, you see, gravitational lensing happens when light from a distant galaxy bends as it passes by a massive object, like a galaxy cluster. Right. It's like the gravity of that cluster is acting like a giant magnifying glass, distorting the light from the galaxy behind it. Exactly. But here's the thing. 
If those massive objects also have this concentrated time energy around them, it would warp space-time even more, creating a stronger lensing effect than what we would predict based only on their visible mass. Oh, I see. So we'd be looking for those stronger-than-expected lensing effects as evidence of this time-energy concentration. Exactly. And this is what's so exciting about this time-energy framework. It's not just a theoretical idea. It gives us testable predictions that we can compare with what we actually observe in the universe. I love it when we can put these theories to the test. Yeah. So we've got a way to potentially detect this concentrated time energy that could be dark matter. But what about dark energy, that mysterious force that's making the universe expand faster and faster? Where does that fit in? Well, if we think of dark matter as the concentrated end of the time energy spectrum, perhaps dark energy represents the other end, a form of time energy that's actually stretching space time itself, pushing everything apart. Wait, so instead of just space expanding, we're talking about time energy itself stretching causing everything to fly apart at an accelerating rate. That's the idea. And you know, it actually lines up with some of the current observations about dark energy, including that accelerating expansion we see. This is seriously blowing my mind. So we could have these two mysterious forces, dark matter and dark energy, both explained as different expressions of this fundamental time energy fabric of the universe. That would be pretty amazing. It really would be a game changer. But you know, there are other explanations out there for what we're observing. Alternative theories for dark energy. Oh, right. Like, what What are some of those other ideas? Well, one of the most interesting ones is the timescape model. It actually challenges the need for dark energy altogether. But before we get into that, maybe we should explore how we could actually search for evidence of this time energy framework. That's where things get really exciting. Yeah, let's dive into that. I want to know how we can actually test this wild idea. How can we see time as energy at work in the universe? Mm. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. If time really is this dynamic energy force shaping the universe, how can we actually test this idea? It's not like we could just measure time energy with a cosmic ruler or something. You're right. It's definitely not that straightforward. But we can be like cosmic detectives, you know, using all the amazing data we've collected about the universe to search for clues. I like that, cosmic detectives. So where do we start our investigation? What kind of data are we talking about? One of the most exciting places to look is the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB for short. Right, the CMB. That's like the baby picture of the universe, the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. Exactly. And it holds so much information about the early universe. Now, here's where things get interesting for our time energy framework. The CMB isn't perfectly smooth. Okay. It has these tiny temperature variations called anisotropies, like subtle ripples in the fabric of space-time. So instead of just thinking of those ripples as random fluctuations, we'd be looking for specific patterns that might show us how time energy was distributed and behaved in the early universe. Precisely. And if we find patterns that match what the time energy framework predicts, that would be a huge piece of the puzzle. That would be amazing. So the CMB is one place to look. What about other observations? We were talking about gravitational lensing earlier. Could that give us more clues? Absolutely. Remember, gravitational lensing happens when light from distant galaxies gets bent by the gravity of massive objects closer to us. Right. And by measuring how much the light is bent, we can learn about the distribution of mass, including that mysterious dark matter. Exactly. And if dark matter really is a concentration of time energy, like we've been discussing, we should see some specific lensing effects, effects that go beyond what traditional models predict. So we'd be looking for those anomalies in the lensing patterns, the telltale signs that time energy is warping space-time around those massive objects. You got it. That would be another big clue. This is really starting to feel like a cosmic treasure hunt. We have the CMB, gravitational lensing, any other tools in our cosmic detective kit? We do. We can also use redshift data. Redshift is the stretching of light waves as objects move away from us. Right, like the sound of a siren getting lower as an ambulance speeds away. The Doppler effect. That's a great analogy. Now, if this time energy framework is right, redshift might be more than just about space expanding. Oh. What else could it be telling us? It could also reflect the stretching of time energy itself. Whoa, okay, so instead of just seeing redshift as a measure of distance, we'd be analyzing it for 
clues about how time energy is distributed and behaving in different parts of the universe. Exactly. We'd be looking for regions with higher redshifts than we'd expect, which could indicate a higher concentration of time energy stretching space-time in those areas. And if those regions also line up with where we see dark energy effects, that would be another piece of evidence pointing toward the time energy framework. This is amazing. We've got a whole toolkit of cosmic clues, the CMB, gravitational lensing, and redshift data, all potentially giving us insights into how time energy works. Aww. It's incredible to think that these seemingly separate observations could all be connected by this one underlying principle. It's pretty mind-blowing, right? But we also need to be realistic. It's going to be challenging to find definitive evidence. These observations are incredibly complex, and interpreting the data isn't always straightforward. So it's not going to be like one aha moment where one observation confirms everything. We'll need to carefully analyze and cross-check all these different data points. Exactly. Building a strong case for this framework will take a lot of careful detective work, comparing observations across different areas of astrophysics. And then there's another challenge, maybe even more profound, the shift in how we think about time itself. Oh, right. That's a big one. It's hard to wrap our heads around time being anything other than this linear, unchanging thing. Mm. This framework asks us to see it as dynamic, fluid, intertwined with energy. That's a big leap. It is. To accept this framework might require a fundamental change in how we understand physics. But that's also what makes it so exciting, right? It pushes us to expand our understanding of the universe in a really big way. This whole conversation is definitely making me think differently about time and the universe. It makes me wonder... If time really is this malleable energy force, are there any practical implications? Could we potentially manipulate time somehow, speed it up or slow it down? That's a great question. And right now it's still in the realm of science fiction. But if this time energy framework turns out to be true, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. Imagine being able to control the flow of time, slowing down aging, or even traveling through different moments in history. The implications are mind boggling. That would be absolutely incredible. But maybe we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. We still need to explore other ideas and see if they hold up. You mentioned an alternative theory the timescape model. Right, let's bring that into the conversation. The timescape model offers a completely different perspective on dark energy. It suggests that maybe we don't even need dark energy to explain why the universe is expanding faster and faster. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. Tell me more about this timescape idea and how it differs from the time energy framework. All right, let's unpack this timescape model. It challenges the whole idea of dark energy, right? Th that's pretty big claim. So how does it actually work? Well, the timescape model suggests that what we see as the accelerating expansion of the universe could actually be an illusion. An illusion. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, it proposes that this illusion is caused by differences in how time is measured in different parts of the universe. Okay, so how could different ways of measuring time make the universe look like it's accelerating when it's not? Think about it this way. Imagine you have clocks in different parts of the universe, and they're all running at slightly different speeds. Why would they be running at different speeds? Because of the variations in gravitational fields. Remember, gravity affects time. Right, right. The stronger the gravity, the slower time flows. So clocks near massive objects would run slower than those in areas with weaker gravity. Exactly. And here's the kicker. If we're trying to measure how fast distant galaxies are moving away from us, those differences in timekeeping could throw off our measurements. Making it seem like those galaxies are accelerating even if they're not. Precisely. It's like saying the universe isn't actually expanding faster and faster, but our perception of its expansion is changing because our cosmic clocks aren't all synced up. That's a pretty mind-bending concept. So instead of needing this mysterious dark energy to explain the acceleration, the timescape model says it's all about perspective and how gravity affects our measurements of time. Exactly. It's a really elegant idea, but of course the big question is, does it hold up? Right. Is there any evidence to support this timescape model? Well, it's definitely a hot topic in cosmology right now, and researchers are taking it seriously. There was actually a study from the University of Canterbury just last December that used the timescape model to analyze observational data. What did they find? They found that the timescape model could actually account for some of the observed cosmic acceleration. Wow, so it's not just some fringe theory. It's actually making some headway in explaining the data. It is, and it really highlights how our understanding of the universe is constantly evolving. We're always gathering new information, refining our models, and being open to new ideas. That's what makes cosmology so fascinating. 
It's a never-ending quest to understand our place in the cosmos. But with all these different theories and interpretations swirling around, it can be hard to know what to believe. I hear you. It can definitely feel overwhelming, but that's where the scientific process comes in. It's not about blindly accepting one theory over another. So how do we make sense of it all? It's about carefully evaluating the evidence, considering different perspectives, and constantly testing our ideas against observations. We need to be open to being wrong, to changing our minds as new information comes in. So even with all this talk about time as energy and alternative explanations like the timescape model, we're still very much in the exploration phase. We are, but that's the beauty of it. We're on this incredible journey of discovery, and every new piece of information, every new theory brings us closer to understanding the true nature of the universe. I love that perspective. So where do we go from here? What are the next steps in unraveling these mysteries of time and its connection to those dark forces? Well, I think one of the most crucial things is to keep gathering more data. New telescopes and observational tools are coming online all the time, giving us unprecedented views of the cosmos. The more data we have, the better we can test our theories. More data is always good. What about on the theoretical side? What do we need to do there? We need to continue refining our models, exploring different frameworks, and making testable predictions. It's that back and forth between theory and observation that really drives scientific progress. Makes sense. I'm also really curious about what all of this could mean for us here on Earth. If we really can understand time as a form of energy, could we learn to control it? Can we unlock the secrets to time travel or something crazy like that? Now, those are the questions that really get the imagination going. And while it's still very early in our understanding of time energy, the possibilities are tantalizing. Imagine a future where we could manipulate time, slowing down aging, or maybe even traveling to different moments in history. It's mind-blowing. It really is. This whole conversation has been a whirlwind of mind-bending ideas, challenging everything we thought we knew about the universe and our place in it. But that's what makes exploring these big questions so rewarding. It pushes us to think beyond our everyday experience and embrace the vastness and mystery of the cosmos. I couldn't agree more. The universe is a place of wonder and endless exploration. And the more we learn, the more we realize how much more there is to discover. So well said. I think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today. This idea of time as energy, its potential connection to dark matter and dark energy, the timescape model, it's a lot to digest. But hopefully it sparks some curiosity and a desire to learn more about the amazing universe we live in. Absolutely. The journey is just beginning. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap up this deep dive. A huge thank you to you for joining me today and sharing your incredible insights on this topic. It's been a truly fascinating conversation. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And all of you listening out there, thank you for diving deep with us. Keep looking up at the stars and never stop questioning the wonders of the universe. Hmm. Until next time.